Hello everyone and welcome to another very beautiful chess game of Paul Morphy in the Paul Morphy's chess game series. And in this game Paul Morphy is playing with the black pieces and his opponent is John William Schulte once again who is playing with the white pieces. And Schulte starts the game with playing e4, e5, f4, king's gambit, accepted, bishop to c4, d5, e takes on d5, knight to f6, knight to c3, bishop to d6, knight to f3, and both players castled, bishop to g4, pinning the knight, d4, knight, from b to d7, knight to e2, knight to b6, attacking the bishop, bishop to b3, knight takes on d5, and we have already seen a very similar line between these two players, so after knight takes on d5, Schulten played knight to e5, knight to e3 again by Paul Morphy, and once again Schulten captures the knight, so what else in this position knight is forking the queen and the rook, so bishop takes on e3, and then Paul Morphy captures the knight on e5, d takes on e5, Queen takes queen, and John William Schulten captures the queen with the rook on a1. Rook takes queen. Well, maybe rook from f takes on d1 was the better move. Then f takes on e3, e takes on f6, bishop takes on e2, rook to e1. Well, this looks better for white. And after queen takes on d1, Schulten captures the queen with the rook on a1 and then Paul Morphy captures the knight with the bishop attacking both of the rooks John William Schulten played rook takes on f4 bishop takes on d1 e takes on f6 b6 f takes on g7 king takes on g7 h4 f5 bishop to d4 check king to g6 Bishop to e6. Well, in this position, Paul Morphy wins the exchange. So this line fibers for black. And black is winning. So Paul Morphy played c5. Bishop to d6, attacking the rook. Rook from f to e8. Bishop to a4, attacking the rook again. Rook to e6. Bishop to c7. Rook to c8, attacking the bishop, but then John William Schulten played bishop to d7, forking the rooks. So how would you continue in this position if you had the black pieces? Well, the solution is very obvious and very easy. So Paul Morphy simply played rook to e1, that's check. If rook takes bishop, of course, bishop takes rook on e6. So rook to e1. King to f2, attacking the rook again. So there is no time for capturing the bishop on c7. So between moves, Paul Morphy played rook to e2, check. King to somewhere else, and then Paul Morphy captures the bishop with the rook. And white needs to resign. Paul Morphy is a piece up, but John William Schulten played. Bishop takes on f5. He is not resigning. King to g7, rook to g4 check, and Paul Morphy played king to f6, attacking the bishop. Bishop to d3, attacking the rook. And in this position, black needs to simplify the game. Simplifying the game is a very logical choice in the circumstances. So black has a one extra rook. And in this position, black is definitely winning. So black needs to simplify the game. And everything will be much more easier for black. So what would you do in this position if you had the black pieces? Can you guess the next move of Paul Morphy? Paul Morphy played a killer move. Well, Paul Morphy played 
Rook to e1. Let's check. Sacrificing the rook. Temporary. So Shulten captures the rook with the king. And then Paul Murphy captures the rook with the bishop. And only now, John William Shulten resigned. And before forget, rook to f2 was also fine in this position. But Paul Morphy played rook to e1. So bishop takes on g4 after king takes on e1. That's why Paul Morphy sacrificed the rook for opening the diagonal for the bishop. And this is losing for John William Schulten. And Schulten resigned at move 30. So this is the last position of the game in the database. And in this end game, white is losing. So black has one extra rook. And this is all over for white. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. And I hope to see you next time. Take care.